bit about myself. Um, I'm hoping you know my career path will give you some pointers. <clears throat> so this is my career path. <laughs> and this is me. Um, as you can tell, my career path is not a straight line. Uh, in fact, you see, I zigged that too. Um, in the last 30 years of my career, I have changed job many, many times. I have changed career multiple times. Um, I was trained as an engineer, but you know, um, I worked uh, for Siemens three years and then I um, went to uh, a foreign bank. It's called ING Bank. It's from Europe. And way back then, I was still in China. Um, I moved to a new city. It's called Shenzhen. Some of you probably have uh, heard of it. It's across the border of Hong Kong. And back then, I was young, you know, fearless. I had nothing to lose. Um, so with a handwritten resume, um, I was able to get into ING Bank. Um, maybe because I uh, spoke English and ING Bank opened the first branch in China. Um, so I was uh, accepted. And then I was sent to the head office for training. And I started to work as a loan officer. Um, basically, it's commercial banking. I visit corporations and I make loans to them. And I worked there all the way to senior manager. Um, it was year 2000, and I moved to Canada. And then everything uh, was put back to ground zero. Um, I think most of you would agree with me, if you move to a new country, you probably have uh, to start from scratch. And that's what I did. So I found my way to AMD and I work as a accountant for only three months. I hated the job, I didn't like it. And then I tried to get back to banking and it was difficult. Um, in China, I work as a loan officer in commercial banking, but in Canada, it was really hard to get the same kind of work. Um, I heard people say retail banking uh, is where most of the jobs were. And I tried and tried. Um, I found my way into national collections of CIBC. Um, later on, whenever I told people where I work, national collections, people were like, oh, collection? That was interesting. You know, that was. At the first place, I, I realized, well, this was probably where I see most of the bad decisions. You know, when you make loans to consumer customers and if they don't pay, uh, the bank has to collect. So that's where I see all kinds of bad loans, uh, credit card, mortgage, personal loan, auto loan, line of credit all kinds. It was actually a great place to learn uh, why we made all those bad decisions. So I started at National Collections and I, I made my way back to the beginning of the process, which was uh, origination and then to account management. So I started to know more about retail banking. More importantly, way back then, uh, I was able to um, do something, you know, it, it becomes fancy today. It's called machine learning, but what, back then it was uh, predictive modeling. As you can understand, um, consumer loans, you have huge volume, uh, but each loan is tiny, right? And there's no way, you know, you can uh, manually make all those decisions. So decisions have to be made by computer model and all the process need to be automated. So that's where I pick up uh, um, 
machine learning and or predictive modeling. So I worked my way into G money and I became a modeler. So I did a lot more machine learning. And then um, year 2008, um, GE exited the market after the meltdown, uh, the subprime crisis. So I um, went to Scotiabank. So I, I, I just quit before everybody else did. And I, I moved to Scotiabank. I was the international bank in, uh, in Scotiabank. And I started to develop uh, strategies for credit card. And, and I usually say cards, lines, loans, mortgage. So I had the opportunity to work with every product and every point um, in the process from the beginning to the end. I travel a lot to South America. And then I became a director and then I became a senior director. So one day I was approached by a headhunter. So he asked me, Eric, would you like to go to a startup, a small company called Appburn, and you can be their chief risk officer. So that's when I quit uh, the big bank and I went to a small company. And then after that, um, you know, fast forward, um, it was year 2018. Um, so the CEO of uh, Wicca Data, uh, Shawa, I knew Shawa way back. So we were friends. So one day um, we were on the phone. I asked Shawa, what uh, are you doing? Uh, so he said something that was very, very interesting. So I, I was always into uh, training and I love to help people um, find their role in the data space. So I decided to quit cooperation altogether and I became one of the co-founders in Wicca Data. And during this process, I also um, I also talked uh, first at uh, George Brown and then there was a chance I also taught at uh, Schulich uh, School of Business at York University. So today I'm doing what I love, uh, which is helping people manage a job in the data space and build a career um, in the data space. So that's enough for me. And um, I think you realize that it's completely normal uh, changing names, you know, switch to a different field and different space. And sometimes you just have to do it, um, either voluntarily or involuntarily. Um, sometimes you want to do it, some, sometimes you're forced to do it. But you just have to change to stay in the game. Now, let's go to the next slide. Um, a little bit more about WeCal data and what we do. Um, we have only, well, <laughs> we have only two, two members left. That's okay. I can still treat you as a full house. Uh, so we are engaged in training business. We're a private college. We actually have three uh, part of business. And one is training, and then we have a subsidiary called Beam Data. And we use a vehicle to do uh, consulting. So we provide students with the opportunity to work on the real time project. And if students can have that kind of experience, written on the resume and they will get more interviews. And the third part we do is, we also have a subsidiary called We Career. Uh, we provide um, career services through one-on-one -on -one mentorship. We hire back for uh, previous successful alumni, alumni, and we pair up the mentor mentees and they help the students uh, until they find jobs. So a few um, sources, if you go online and do your research and you will find CIOs, which have career comma, they have all rated um, data science program uh, we call data very, very favorable. 
So for several years in a row, we were rated the top so boot camps. Um, we also have uh, other programs. Um, today, I'm going to present on um, business intelligence, um, but we also have data engineering, we have machine learning engineering, we have DevOps, um, but all related to um, backend uh, data. Um, we run Meetup. Uh, we run the biggest Meetup in Toronto. It's called Toronto Data Science and Big Data Meetup. And we used to meet everybody in person, but since COVID, uh, we started to uh, run Meetups online. All right, so let's go to the next slide. I just put one fictitious job. It's a CRM, digital marketing and email campaign. Imagine your resume if it has experience like this. If you can just quickly go through it and you know you will be able to get interviews. Uh, but this is not easy. And most students, they feel like, you know, this is not something I have done. So I don't feel comfortable or I don't feel confident saying that I know and I can do you know email campaign. So I call this imposter syndrome because you know this kind of experience will get you an interview and will get you um, your foot in the door but you don't feel confident enough to write these bullet points on your resume. The reason is very simple because you have never done it and you feel like a fraud, right? So this happened to new grads, but this also happens to career switchers. How do we overcome the imposter syndrome? Um, we do this. So we provide robust training. So we simulate the real work, we simulate the real work environment. So it's the work and the work environment. You do the work itself, and you also understand the relationship you know, with other people in other departments. And a lot of times it takes a process to finish the whole thing. And obviously you need to collaborate you know, with product, with sales, with the marketing team, with technology team. So if we can put you, put you in that kind of environment and you do the work and you understand the work environment, the relationship, and then you will feel comfortable because you have the context. And more importantly, you can produce some professional work samples. Even better, you can build a project portfolio. You can show the employers, you can impress them. And portfolio has been a reliable indicator that you will succeed in a row. So this kind of training will not only get you interviews and will also let you pass the interview because you will be able to um, tell stories about the work and the work relationship. And every single bullet points you put on a resume, you can back it up. You feel very comfortable because you have done it, right? So role-based training is extremely valuable. And that's what, what we do. And um, this kind of training, I usually say, um, you don't have to learn everything. You only need to learn enough to perform the role. So here are the two stories I want to tell you that um, experience sometimes doesn't matter. If the experience is not relevant, the length of experience is a very bad measure. And the hiring managers know it. So a lot of times when you see the job description says three to five years, you can simply ignore it. Because three to five years irrelevant or less relevant experience is nothing. But if you can get highly relevant experience, you know, uh, from 
three months in the boot camp and then three more months working on the real time project, that's gold. And you will be able to convince the hiring manager that you can do it. Um, the two stories I want to tell you is, um, I used to work at Scotiabank and then we had summer interns uh, from school with no experience, but because they knew the newest technology and they knew a better way to do things, it might take them you know, one or two weeks to learn how to perform a task from an older employee. But after that, they will reproduce the exact same quality and maybe give them another week, they will find ways to improve it. You see, the employee, the older employee has been working there for maybe 10 or even more years. Um, they always do things the old way. But a summer intern can you know, double or even triple the productivity. I still remember uh, you know, one summer intern is so good and we started to talk about her even uh, in the weekly management meeting. We say we, we have to give this uh, student a return offer because uh, she's so good. But end of the summer intern and <laughs> you know what she said? She said, I'll think about it. <laughs> I, I guess the, the work environment isn't uh, the best thing. It doesn't actually uh, attract her that much. So you see, a fresh new grad, if you, if you know the new technology and you actually have options and choices and it's the employer that will beg you to stay. All right, so this is my point. Um, Acquire the skill that's highly relevant and is going to bid and the irrelevant experience. And this is what we can provide you. So the next one is same row for many titles. And if you look at what you are gonna learn, uh, it's business analysis, data analysis, and business intelligence. Business analysis, data analysis, business intelligence. I know the program is called business intelligence. Uh, but you actually will learn all three, BA, DA, and BI. And let me just take you through this whole process so you can understand the process. Uh, BA is you try to understand the needs and requirements of the business. So the business needs data to maybe answer questions and solve problems and support decisions and then create value for the business and or for the customers. So if you know data can help you and can help the business team achieve that, and you will need to, you know, uh, talk to the business user and ask them at different level of work. You know, there are three levels in the hierarchy of work. At the highest level, the CEO or the other C-level executives, um, they develop strategy and then uh, the strategy has long-term impact on the business. The middle level, the middle managers, they also make decisions about tactics right, with medium-term impact on the business. And there are also employees on the floor and they make decisions every day. Uh, so it's day-to-day -day activities and they also need data. And you coming as an expert who knows how to use data to support all these decisions at different levels. And then once you know, you know how people make decisions and what information they need, and then you will go back. You'll go to technology team and talk to the developer or DBA database administrator. So I need this information, where can I find it? So as some of you know, there are different applications in an uh, um, enterprise and there are databases behind every single application. So, 
every database also has a bunch of tables and every table has uh, quite many columns. So for you, it's important to know where to find what. So to really measure the success of the business, you will need to create KPIs and you can work backwards. In order to calculate that tip, uh, API, what do you need? Not only the, the, K, the KPI, the same KPI, but different people look at the KPI from different angle or from different dimension, right? So you can look at sales performance from the product perspective, or you can look at sales from um, maybe geography or uh, regional perspective. And you can look at performance over time. You can look at performance um, by the best customers or the best customer segment. You see, you have multiple different dimensions. So customer is the who and product is the what and geography is the where and time is the when. And you can have more. Uh, how about why, right? Why do people purchase so much or so little? Uh, is that because of the big promotion or the discount strategy? So those kind of uh, events um, also become something you want to track, right? So for that reason, you get the business requirements and then you go collect the data and process the data and analyze the data and to make data consumable and analyzable. But that's not the end of the process. You will have to find the easy way <clears throat> to extract insights from the data and that falls into business intelligence. And nowadays with technology, with the tools um, like Tableau or Power BI, you can use animation, you can visualize the trend and it becomes super easy for the business team to get what you want to uh, communicate. And that oftentimes has big impact on the business. So for that reason, you will see, you can work as an analyst in different departments and functions, and you can work in marketing and sales and product and operations, finance, risk management, human resources, or you can work in different industries, in CRM or retail or e-commerce, public sector in government, in school, universities, hospital. And you can work in banks, insurance companies, and you can work in supply chain. And it's enough to say that you pretty much find jobs in every single industry, every sector, every functional area, every department. And if you do the search, you will find lots and lots of jobs. And I hope you feel optimistic, you know, about the outlook of uh, the job market. So BI professionals are also fast trackers because the work you do and the business intelligence that you deliver to the business team is highly, highly visible. And you can start as a BI analyst and on average, this is already old data. I, I'm pretty sure with inflation and now the jobs pays even more. Uh, but a typical BI analyst pays 71K and a BI consultant pays 80K. And analysts and consultant are more on the business side. And sometimes you have the title developer or engineer. So that's 84 and 90. And very quickly, you can become a BI manager or even BI director. So these are progressive. And I can tell you the exceptions. Uh, we have a fresh new grad who graduated from Brock University only this year. And he actually found a job that pays six figure. That's already 100,000. I'm not saying this is normal, you know, not everybody expect to be paid so much, you know, for the first job, but it's possible. I mean, it's totally doable. And 
going back, if you have this professional range, if you can do all three, BA, DA, and BI, and you can command higher salary, you can negotiate with the employer, because it's really, really hard to find good people who can do all three. And once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. All right. Okay, so this is the bootcamp we're talking about. Um, you know, if you want to build a career in BI in 2023, I think now is a good time. And the bootcamp plus the mentorship um, costs 70, 70, 7,500, um, but with early bird discount. The early bird discount, as far as you know, is 15%. And if you're in Canada, um, we will use you the T2202A, and you can get tax rebate, uh, tax rebate next year. So that's fifth, uh, additional 15%. So you have um, a total 30% discount of 7,500. And I personally believe that's a great value. Imagine, um, you know, you invest 7,000, 500 and it helps you find uh, a first job, maybe a first job in data space. I think that's totally worth it. And that's, that's like, you know, if you can find uh, your data job two months earlier, uh, it will pay for itself. So the bootcamp itself, you know, uh, will last 12 weeks and three months. And it's 7.30 to 10.30, Monday through Thursday, and Friday is the study day. So we'll teach you five data tools, including Excel, SQL, Python, Tableau, and Power BI. And after that, once you learn the tools, and we will give you eight projects so you can apply the tools to solve real world problems. And with eight projects, you will be able to build a portfolio. And once again, portfolio is such a great way to impress and convince the hiring manager to hire you. So with this bootcamp training, you will become super competitive and you will, uh, so these are the two benefits that we guarantee you. You will pass the coding, the coding test and you will pass the case interviews. And the mentorship is more about, you know, resume search and interview. Um, we say six months, but some people find jobs earlier and some uh, people take more take more time. And it includes resume building and job networking and referrals. We do provide referrals. So you compete with just a couple of people instead of you know several hundred people. And interview scripts and interview practicing. So we do mock interviews to make you feel comfortable before you go to the real one. So mentorship or career services is to help you become super expressive. So you can explain the jobs with confidence so you can pass business and behavior interview. Um, let me know if you have any question. All right. So I think this is the part I want to show you why role-based training is better than skill-based training. Skill-based training, I think it's impossible and it's hopeless uh, because first of all, you learn with no purpose, you don't have a good sense of purpose, and you just code, you don't know why you're doing it. A role-based training, you have a clear purpose because you're learning enough to do the job, right? Or in this case, you're learning enough to get the job. And we simulate your role and how you perform the task in the context of function, process, business, industry and how you communicate up and down and across the organization to get the job done. So this is really, really important because this show you the big picture. And it's important for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're coming from the business educational background, everybody needs to understand the business and how to make money, right? We need to know the big picture of how the whole industry, and hopefully it's a rising industry, right? and how the company you work for is positioned in this industry, how competitive it is. And then within the company, 
you know, people are organized into different functions. So as I said before, you have heard of, you know, marketing and sales, product, um, finance, and risk, technology, operations. So you'll have vertical functions, but we all know that that's not how the work gets done or the job gets done. And how work gets done, it's always a horizontal process, right? So imagine this is you. So you're in this vertical line. You're also in this horizontal line. Nowadays, if you read the job description, you always see it requires you to work across functional, right? So you need to collaborate with, for instance, somebody in te technology team uh, so they can give you access to the data and you will need their help to find the right data and to, to find the database and the tables and the columns you need. So that's your material and that's your input and the raw data is your input. And then you serve the customer, internal customers in the business team, right? So the IT becomes your supplier and the business team is your customer. So in order to perform the role, I think you will need to understand the work itself and what is the input, what is the output, and who can provide you with the input and what is the, uh, who is the output for, right? So this is like, and a product or a service that you provide to, to the business team, but you do need data you know, from IT team. And I hope with this picture, you understand the context is actually really, really important. And context gives you a job meaning. And it also gives you the material to tell good stories during the interview. Okay, so, and this is just an illustration of the bookend. So at the core, you will learn the five data tools, including Excel, um, Python, SQL, Tableau, and Power BI. And we have eight, so not five. Uh, we have eight projects. And eight projects allow you to sample you know, different career paths. And end of the day, you may pick, you know, maybe five out of eight, and put them on your portfolio. So with the portfolio, you will show people that you have highly employable skills and you have also gathered a hands-on industry experience. And you will be able to convince the hiring manager you can do the job. Okay, real quick, what is business analysis? So you will need to learn how to make money in business. And for every single project, we will need to learn how to make money in business. Where is the money? And the core processes and key decision areas, the goals and objectives, and also the hierarchy of work from top down, from strategy to tactics and to operations. So as you can see, you know, all these are you know, business objects. And to tell you the truth, you know, this is almost like a mirror image of the data project. And later on, you will realize that business analysis will give you some context. And data analysis will confirm you know, uh, your knowledge, or maybe will give you uh, different information and then that will prompt you to think differently. So if you just bounce back and forth between business and data, you will learn a lot. Right. And after a while, people will think, you know, you know more than them because you talk to the business people, you also talk to uh, the technology team and the, 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 the data team. And then you will be able to look at uh, the business from a high level or uh, every customer, every product um, could be a story. And all of these will help you learn about the business and data uh, within a very short of time, within a very short time. But data analysis, and um, this is the dirty work, and this is also your foundational skill. So we'll train you to be very good at you know, pre-processing, pre-processing just to 
make data usable. And then after that, you will explore uh, the data, the dimensions and the measures and the values and distribution, right? And you will generate some summary statistics. So you will know the range of certain dimension and you will know the minimum and maximum and average of some KPIs. And throughout this process, you will also detect some data issues and you will know how to deal with the data issues. And this is oftentimes something the employer highly, highly value. Oh, we have another one uh, to join us. That's great. So we have three members. So after that, you will create a data model. And sometimes we'll call data model ERD. So it's short for Entity Relationship Diagram or Schema. Right. Uh, dimension table versus fab table and the primary key versus boring key. And how do you connect the dimension table to a fab table using primary and boring key to create one to many relationships? These are the basics that you will need to learn. And after this, you can do the business intelligence. And you will put together, um, you know, let me just show you this quick video. You can see that, you know, you have these many dimensions and you can uh, use them as filters. And then you go to different dimensions to the geography and you will look at uh, uh, three different KPIs, by country, by continents. And you can also go along the hierarchy of product. And you can go to manufacturer and, and you can analyze each vendor. All right. So this kind of dashboard becomes uh, a service and the business team, they know how to interact with the dashboard and they will be answer, they will be able to answer many of their own questions. And that free you up for some more you know, value added uh, activities. So end of the day, if you really want to communicate the benefits, it has to be you know, one of these four. So it could be revenue growth, it could be cost reduction, it could be efficiency gain and quality improvement. And all of these, when you tell people if you do this, you will get that and people will listen up, right? Because everybody in love to see the benefits. Okay, so if I go to the next slide, then this is how you get the job. Um, with a resume, um, it's not convincing. But if you have a resume and also a portfolio, and this is not the full portfolio, um, some of our students, um, they do two pages, and the first page is the resume, and the second page is the work sample. Now, in fact, over here, if you click the website, it's going to take you to the portfolio, so you will have the opportunity to see more details. And as I said before, you make a statement on the resume, but you prove it you know, with portfolio. So if you have this combo, you know, resume plus the portfolio, and you will be able to impress and convince the hiring, hiring manager to give you that opportunity. Okay, now we also provide uh, the alumni, alumni mentorship support. So this is the career services. And we pay our successful alumni to help our new generation of students to find jobs. And we actually develop some internal app or tool and to help you you know, communicate and manage the mentorship. Um, there's one thing I really want to mention, it's the technical test. Um, nowadays, almost every data job, they will need you to, to pass a test. Um, let me tell you the truth. Nine out of 10 people, they are scared by this test. Uh, by this test. Um, this is the bad news because almost every data analyst or BI analyst jobs 
you know, will attract lots and lots of resume. So the employer has to use some way uh, to shortlist. And a coding test is oftentimes uh, the best way to uh, screen candidates. Um, some people say uh, code, code fight, you know, before the resume fight. I think uh, this is a better process because uh, if your resume doesn't look as good, but if you do a very good job in um, coding tests, I think you will stand out and you will um, have the second round interview and the hiring manager will want to meet you. The good news is only one out of 10 candidates will respond to the technical test. And if you take the test and pass it, you effectively reduce the competition by 90%. And we all know that it's a very competitive market. Oh, uh, just give me one second. We actually have a, an online here. Hey, Ajit. Hello? 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 Ajit, can you hear me? I think, Ajit, you're on mute. Sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. Hey. Yeah, so pretty much not hearing from you. And I was just looking around. So yeah, now I can hear you. OK, excellent. Uh, I was thinking, you know, I, I asked two students and I, I thought none of you will show up, but I'm so glad that you actually joined the meeting. <laughs> yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me to the meeting. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. Um, let me just um, stop sharing. I think it's important to have this conversation with you. Uh, just give me a second. Okay. Okay. So now we can see each other better. Mm -hmm. um, so I, just, I still remember you know, how we met and um, not too long ago, probably yeah. in, one of, in one of these sessions. And, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, I know you, but you know the, 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 the members uh, of our meetup group and they don't know you. Uh, can mm -hmm. you just um, tell us a bit about yourself? You know, before and after, you know, before you took the book camp and how um, you made the decision to jump <clears throat> into the data space. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ajit Manandar. And <clears throat> so I always had a uh, thought of being a data analyst or making a career in data analytics from the beginning. So I, to that end, I completed master's degree in statistics from back in Nepal. And after that, so during that time in Nepal, we did not have many like practical knowledge and we only used to like <clears throat> uh, study using pen and paper, you know? So even the course that we use in any, uh, data uh, analytics uh, tool that also we used to write in our copy. And, <laughs> and so basically we didn't have any practical uh, tool to use. So after that, I did my research and to and I came to Canada to uh, do a postgraduate degree in data analytics. And at that time I learned like how uh, accurate data analysis can help businesses uh, achieve their goal. And so after that, I even wanted to upgrade my skills. So I joined uh, Google Data Analytics course and uh, I was able to like uh, improve my skills, but mm -hmm. still in the job source part. So basically I was good in technical part, but in the job source or my resume and interview skills were not that good. So at that time I had a friend who uh, 
recommended me actually to join WeCloud Data Bootcamp. And he said that you have a mentorship program after the course that will help me uh, to find a job. So that is the main reason I joined WeCloud Data. And yeah, it was really helpful. And also uh, the mentor, my mentor, Bart Farm, he was very friendly and very helpful in uh, helping me find a job. So we, at first, we had to change my resume A to Z, you know, like I had two pages of uh, resume and it was not very specific for data analytics. So we made it like one page resume and it showed my data analytics skill especially. And after making changes in my resume, I started getting interviews as well. And <clears throat> also with the help with help of Bart, I am very grateful to WeCloud Data and especially Bark Farm for uh, landing my first job as data analyst. And he we used to do mock interviews and every time he used to give me feedback and how I can improve my communication skills during a interview. So that really helped me. And yeah, also the job that I'm working right now. So as a BI specialist at Ontario Health, and for this interview also, Bart has a big hand in helping me. And also he helped me with the technical uh, test during the interview. So yeah, that is how I got my first job. And I am really grateful to WeCloud for everything that I learned from there. And also all the um, profi all the instructors were pretty good and they were very helpful. Like if I had any questions or doubt during the course session or even outside the course, then they would uh, help me by uh, giving me like examples, you know, like real world examples, how I can use that specific uh, technical term or technical thing in the actual workforce. So yeah, and now I'm pretty very happy to land my first job as a data analyst. And yeah, I owe everything to WeCloud Data. <laughs> Uh, did, did you already start? Yes, I started from July 31st. So it's been almost two weeks now. Two weeks. So how, how did you feel? So about the job? Yeah, the yeah. first two weeks. Uh, was it overwhelming or? Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> so <clears throat> in what I've noticed in any data analytics job is that mm -hmm. you must have the technical skills. That is a must. But uh, in the same place, you need to have the knowledge of like the domain knowledge, you know. So as I'm working in the Ontario Health, I, and I do not have any background related to healthcare system. So right. yeah, yeah, it is pretty overwhelming. And uh, the first week was just like learning the uh, work that uh, especially my team does and how I can contribute to the work of the team. So now I have started working on projects. Like I just help other lead BI leads to in their work, but still I'm learning. And the healthcare system, like there are lots of abbreviations, you know. And every time we uh, chat, we there there uh, has like they use many abbreviations such as. HSP and PHU and things like that. And I did not know what those were, right? So yeah, of abbreviations, which is like thousands of the <laughs> so, uh, abbreviations that I need to learn. So yeah, I'm still learning. But uh, the best part is that as I am very interested in, in this job and mm, so even if I work all day, then I do not feel like I'm working, you know? It's like I'm learning new thing and uh, improving my data analytics skill and using my knowledge and skill to help this organization. So yeah, it is pretty rewarding experience for me and challenging at the same time. 
I have to ask you this question uh, because changing to public sector, um, mm -hmm. specifically Ontario House, yeah, this government. Yes. Yeah, but that's that's a, that's a big change. So you also moved to Canada. Um, moved to Canada not too long ago. That's a big change. Yeah. Right. And I would did, like to. Yes. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Did, you, did you specifically choose to apply for government jobs? Uh, is it just one of many jobs you apply for? Yeah, so, okay, that's a, yeah, interesting question. It is, yeah, as you said, one of the many jobs that I applied. But, mm -hmm. so, yeah, I mostly applied to government jobs. So I wanted to work in public sector. So, yeah, just like before this, mm, uh, job, I had another interview with SGI Canada. So it's Saskatchewan Government Insurance. Yeah. And if there I uh, passed the technical assist, uh, assessment and I went on to the panel interview. But at that time, yeah, I was not selected. Mm -hmm. But it was a great experience for me. And yeah, so most of mostly I used to um, apply. So I wanted to work in a public sector. So I mostly I used to apply in government jobs. So I used to source for government jobs, but yeah, I used to apply at least like five to 10 jobs every day, you know? So- Five to 10 jobs every day. Yes. So in our previous meeting, as you said, we should apply in the morning, yes. right? <laughs> yes. I remember that. And every morning I wake up at around 5.30 to six, like between five and six. And after getting ready, the first thing I did was job oh. search. Yeah. Apply, apply, apply. Yeah. And that works. That strategy worked, right? Yeah. I had applied for over 300 jobs, maybe. Mm -hmm. and How many it, interviews? Around 10, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. How many interviews altogether? 10, maybe. How many? So more, 10 to 15. Oh, 10 to 15 interviews. Yeah. With, so, with, with how many companies? I'm sorry, I didn't get it. With how many employers, how many companies? Yeah, so 10 to 15, yeah. 10 to 15, okay. Yeah. So, so most of them are public, not public, but uh, private in, in companies. Yeah. But yeah, so God had a plan for me to let me work in the sector that I wanted to. So, yeah. <laughs> that so is what how, how long you have been applying? Okay, so... Uh, when I joined We Cloud Data, at that time, I was working full-time. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, uh, on March 2023, I got laid off from my full-time job. Mm -hmm. So after that, I began to, like, I had a full-time job of applying for jobs, you know. <laughs> so at that time, yeah, I had a lot of time to Since March. improve my interview skills. And... Mm -hmm. As I said earlier, Bach, he helped me a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm very grateful to him for helping me. And every time, like whenever I wanted to talk to him about something, he always made time for me. So that mm -hmm. is the big mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So for, I applied for like around four months, like with, like a full-time job. Right. right. Yeah. So My before, before Ontario House, you... You you failed some interview, right? Yes, I did. Yeah. So most interviews during the like uh, <clears throat> fourth phase, I would say, mm -hmm. uh, was not even selected for. So I was selected for interview, but I did not even, uh, pass the first uh, phone screening or the first phase of the interview. But after after doing mock interviews with Bart and mm, yeah, getting his feedback really helped me and made me confident to talk and explain so i have to say this i was i am an introvert introvert kind of person so i did not <laughs> so that part also back helped me a lot so how i can express myself and how i can like how to tell a small thing as a story you know so yes. people are always interested in a story, not the words that you say, right? So if it, there is some kind of a story that is related to 
their uh, specific needs, then yeah, I can uh, <laughs> be more uh, like useful for their uh, company, right? So yeah, these things, yeah, Bach taught me a lot of things so, uh, yeah. about speaking also. So I, if it was like for uh, six months ago, I would not be like speaking to you like this. <laughs> you. I think you, you you look so confident today. Excellent. So uh, there's another thing I want to ask you. The interviews you failed, did you get any technical interviews? So the ones that I failed? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so you, you mentioned at the beginning some screening interview you failed, but after um, you did the mock interview with Buck and you were able to pass the, the screening. Yes. And how about te any technical interview that you failed? So honestly speaking, I have not failed any technical, like specifically really? part. Yeah. I technical uh, phase, uh, technical part of the interview. But uh, in the panel interview, they mm -hmm. did not. So I did pass the technical interview and got into the panel interview. But at that time, I uh, did not, was not like successful mm -hmm. in passing the interview. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of the technical I did, I had mm, like three technical interviews, like three technical tests that I need to do, had to do in my previous uh, experience. But mm, yeah, I passed all of those. But as I said, the panel interview, the final interview was mm, like, I could not successfully uh, pass those. So the final one was more business and behavior and it was a panel, right? Yeah. The panel interview was always challenging because you need to take care of everybody. Mm -hmm. Right. And you didn't um, feel the technical interviewer challenging or I, you, you, you were okay with the technical interview, right? Yeah, so I was okay with technical interview. And also, as I said, so some, yeah, it is challenging, but uh, with the help of Bart, so he's an experienced person and he knows how to uh, work on these kind of things, right? So I always asked him for help and he was always ready to um, give me um, some ideas you know how i can do that and yeah with his help i was uh, like <laughs> i never failed a technical mm, technical interview part that's excellent mm -hmm. okay great um there's it, so the final interview that you did win with ontario health um where do you think you 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 stood out how did you win that one Okay, so for this also, I will say my technical skills and I had to present. Uh, so they had given me a data set and asked me to create a report or data visualization. So I think I stood out in my presentation. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, I as I said, I have my statistical, statistical background. So I use my statistical knowledge about the methodologies and techniques that um, can help Ontario Health to make specific decisions based on the data, right? So yeah, I believe that thing or my presentation of the um, data that they sent me was where I stood out the most, yeah. And even though you had no background um, working in healthcare, <laughs> so so that's possible, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. possible. Yeah, because yeah. you you have the data skills you can work in in pretty much any industry and in public or private sector yeah yeah so the data skill is a must mm -hmm. yeah but i believe that domain knowledge, domain knowledge after you work right Be because if you do not have a job or in a specific sector then you I don't think anyone will like will want to learn about those things. And also in uh, it's hard to learn. <laughs> you don't know which industry. Yeah, so that is the question, right? So and mm -hmm. 
for to get a job i believe excel sql and one of the data visualization tool that is enough and also the power um, r programming or python you can learn it later you know yes <laughs> so yes found so, is it because government government is usually slow adopting new technologies <laughs> yes 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 so yeah, might be yeah, that. <laughs> so, so Excel, SQL, SQL is super important, right? Well, the most important, yeah. SQL and is the most important. Is about at least one of, like at least basic knowledge of one of the um, data visualization tool, like Power BI or Tableau, right? So mm -hmm. I, I was good at Power BI rather than Tableau. But in the bootcamp, I got to learn okay. advanced, uh, techniques are in Tableau as well. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so where where do you think the book can help you the most? So, um, the tools or the SQL uh, coding workshop or uh, the portfolio workshop. Yes, the portfolio workshop. Yeah, it really helped, and mm, in that course also, uh, we were taught like how to, so for every data analyst job, you need to understand the requirement accurately, right? So to mm -hmm. understand requirements, what type of questions you need to ask. So that is what uh, I would say is the best uh, learning for me from WeCloud data. And also, uh, as I told, uh, I, but I knew how to work with data visualization tools. But after doing the WeCloud Data Bootcamp, I was kind of, a, I would not say expert, but pretty knowledgeable on like how I can make my dashboards more uh, attractive and presentable, right? And, and finally, as I said, the um, mock interviews, that was the most helpful for me. As yeah, you know, I am not very talkative or I am not very expressive person. So that really helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. So we have two members in the audience. Um, um, Oya, Olia, and Mr. New. Do you have any questions? Don't be shy. You can just open your mic and you can ask Ajit. Or you can chat. <laughs> you choose. Sorry, it took me some time to <laughs> unmute myself. Um, thank you guys for the presentation. Um, quite a refreshing to <laughs> understand what's going on on the market right now. Um, like it's actually really good to understand because I'm actually I'm on the path of software engineer and I'm was thinking because I wasn't able to find a job recently and um, Walmart that was supposed to hire us full-time didn't due to the economy in the US. And I was thinking that, oh, my SQL skills are pretty good. <laughs> and I really like visualization. Maybe I should kind of go into data analytics path. But at the same time, <laughs> I was like, Okay, it looks like it's also pretty competitive at the moment. If applying for 300 jobs and you get an only 10 <laughs> resume yeah. or 10, 15, um, 15, 15. 10, 15. Yeah, that's it's, it's really yeah, as uh, you see, unfortunate, but um, yeah. yeah, I also think it's because of the recession that's going on. Mm -hmm. and I, even I was laid off from my previous job because of uh, financial crisis in the company. So, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> that is the main reason that uh, there's a very high competition, you know, uh, yeah. check in the LinkedIn. So you will find at least 200 to 500 uh, applicants for one job. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So um, go mm -hmm. ahead, go ahead. Audio. Yeah, my, my main question is how, dif how difficult it is to combine to, 
let's say full time job and the boot camp. So it totally. How how difficult was it for you? Because you mentioned that you started as a, <laughs> with a, having a full time job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was uh, challenging at some point. But as I said, I was very interested in data analytics mm -hmm. and it was my first motivation for uh, learning. And even the course is pretty, uh, it's very, uh, <clears throat> like it combines all the aspects of data analytics. And also you get to work on different projects, you know, that will, uh, amplify your skills in data analytics so as i was very interested and i and was dedicated and focused on learning data analytics so i would not say it was <laughs> it was pretty difficult it was sometimes challenging but yeah it was rewarding at the same time so i mm, always made time for learning this so mm, yeah if you are uh, dedicated and if you want to like if you set it as a goal then it will not be difficult that i would say that mm -hmm. okay it's possible yeah <laughs> it's possible anything is possible yeah. <laughs> because uh honestly i will have to take some sort of job <laughs> just to, to sustain myself and uh never give up that is what i advise that i'll give mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, on maybe another question. Do we, do we have time? Can I ask oh, a question? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, lots uh, of yeah, I noticed that you guys were very, very specific about like uh, differentiating jobs that are in the government kind of sector, right? Public mm -hmm. sector, you called it. Um, how <laughs> how do you know when it's a public sector like when you just um are you looking for the companies you would like to work for first or you're looking through i don't know you're looking through job board and you check in every company and see if you would like to apply or not yeah so as you said i had made a list of companies that I would love to work and always search for job opportunities in their websites or any job boards for those specific companies and apply to those specific companies mostly. But uh, on at the same time, I used to apply like any <laughs> company, but yeah, I had a list of some companies that I wanted to really work for. So yeah, so that is this particular one did you go to ontario house website and click career on, no, no apply no. on indeed on LinkedIn. a board indeed job board okay yeah mm -hmm. so indeed to be specific like indeed indeed is uh, it, it is still the biggest yeah job board mm -hmm. i also apply you uh, from indeed and linkedin only those two job boards right. yeah I just used to go to their uh, company website and apply directly from there. Mm -hmm. okay. Good question. Uh, maybe Mr. Uh, SL New, do you have any questions? I'm not sure if it's a lady or a guy. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no problem. Okay, so I do have Alia. Are, are you in the U.S.? Yes, I'm in New York. In New York, uh, you see, we keep hearing from the politicians the economy is doing great, but <laughs> when <laughs> when people apply for jobs, the market looks tough. You know, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and. I, I I feel like you know we are in the middle of the recession. You know, with the inflation and and the interest rate going so high, and I think and we 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 better you know, keep the job. And if we don't have a job, we will actively look 
for a job. So what's your plan, Alia? Um, uh, I don't know. I will take any job. Like probably my background is in architecture. I do design. I just keep, still keep doing in designs for people sometimes. Like I will pick up some projects mm -hmm. uh, to be able to sustain myself. Mm -hmm. Maybe pro product management, uh, because also I have experience working for a startup as a product manager. Mm -hmm. They they actually influence my decision to go into mm -hmm. tech, into more into like software and data. Yeah, that, and that's... then I mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and then we'll see. I will probably will. <laughs> Start learning, going a little bit more into things that I still don't know. Because for software engineering so far, I, uh, it's the same. I'm actually passing technical interviews and I cannot pass the finals, kind of, mm -hmm. somehow. Mm -hmm. Like, usually I'm getting to the final interviews. Get into the final. Like, oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Final interview is usually with the hiring manager themselves and maybe uh, some member from the team, um, sometimes even their boss. Um, yeah. Yeah, and they just want you to meet everybody and everybody feel comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. And it's tough yeah. because you, you need to, you know, look at everybody. <laughs> they may shoot you different questions. And yeah. sometimes you find maybe your your future peer analyst will ask you technical questions, and uh, the 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 uh, your boss's boss will ask you high level questions. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it, it is a little challenging, but you know, uh, Ajit mentioned with the help uh, from the mentor, you yes, can, you can try to predict what is coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm trying to turn my camera on. My lighting isn't great in this room, and my husband and and can see you. Yes, still working in, <laughs> in the other yes. room. Super. Um, it, I think that oh, go, in, ahead. Okay. go ahead. In the US, there are like more opportunities compared to Canada. Mm -hmm. Ten times more. <laughs> yeah. so ten times more probability that you'll get as well. <laughs> Um, yeah, and, and that seems quite interesting uh, to me, especially if it um, includes visualization. Yeah. That's something that I'm enjoying. Yeah, you, you may so fun. You are uh, <clears throat> like trying to solve a specific problem that will uh, motivate you as well, and you will be more interested, you know. So, how I can do this, and when you work on with a specific problem to solve, then yeah, that is, that makes you more, uh, so rather than just doing a project work in for, uh, from um, any data set that you are taking or just doing a simple work, when you are solving a specific problem that will give you more motivation, that is what I wanted to say. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Actually, earlier you brought up uh, an interesting point. So what if somebody wants to become a product manager or maybe a project manager? Um, um, does it help if they also join the, you know, the data bookend? Um, what, what's your take? Uh, I see that for, for me, it was up. Yeah. Do you ask an agent? Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, so yeah, I, I believe so because I'm not sure uh, what exactly the job responsibilities are for a product manager, mm -hmm. but as per my uh, research, I believe that they also do a lot of data analytics. And so, yeah, it will definitely help uh, in your <coughs> source, job source of product manager. Yeah, it will, I think it will definitely help. But yeah. just do, uh, don't just... Uh, so depend on the uh, course, right? So you should do your homework as well. Like you should uh, work very hard on yourself. Mm -hmm. But then just, if you just take the course and think that you will get a job, it is not like that. So you have to work 
by yourself very hard. So there are instructors to help you, but still, even like if you didn't do not work on yourself, then how will you like ask questions or how will you know um, what are your um, pros and cons, right? So for that, you have to work very hard. Yeah. <laughs> and slowly, surely you will find a job. Yeah. And, and you know, 85, maybe 90% of the bootcamp is hands off. <laughs> so we have to work. <laughs> Yeah. yeah and do you uh, do you have group work group projects as well or just individual so at my work or no no uh, in the boot camp it is individual yeah so everyone does yeah okay. it's individual and um contact your like course mates but the uh, work is individual, yeah. So uh, that projects that you work on in the bootcamp, you can add those uh, in your resume, right? And also uh, in one of my interview, I even gave a uh, like presentation on one of the projects that I did in bootcamp because I have any specific data analytics uh, experience before. So these projects really helped me to show off my skills, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good job. Yeah, yeah. And I remember when uh, we, we had a similar session several weeks ago, and the other uh, successful alumni, and uh, she said, and I asked her the same question, how did you stand out? Mm -hmm. uh, she said, um, I think they hired me, and there was one big reason. They were impressed by the quality of the question I asked them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that shows she did a lot of research about the job and the company, and she really cared about the opportunity. And so there are so many things you can you you can you can uh, demonstrate by asking, you know, high quality questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the other thing, you know, if you want to become a product manager or project manager. Uh, nowadays, almost every company is doing data project. So mm -hmm. if the project is a data project, and naturally, if you know the subject matter, uh, it, it will definitely help, would definitely help. And I remember um, there was a manufacturer in Ontario, it's a big one. Um, it's plastic molding equipment, and they actually have 70% of the global market share. And they started to uh, build a data team. And so all the equipment will send the performance data back to the company. And the company will track and monitor. Uh, there is a dashboard and they will show people uh, when, is the, uh, uh, when is the time to do pre preventive maintenance. And uh, maybe some parts you need to change it. Uh, and, you know, just a few days ago, I changed my air conditioner. It, it's Nanox. You see the screen? It's a big dashboard. <laughs> <laughs> now, all these manufacturer and they started to uh, use data product, you know, yeah. to, yeah. Yeah, to, 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 uh, it, it becomes important, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, um, I have, a, um, I, th I think, three questions for Ajit. Um, one big lesson you have learned, um, either in bookend or uh, the job search, can you share with us um, that one thing that you, you, you've learned, and sometimes even from the failure, right? Some people say experience, experience is what you get when you didn't get what you wanted. <laughs> So what is one big lesson maybe you learned from the first 14 interviews and that allow you to succeed in the final interview? Okay, so I think that uh, the main lesson that I learned from the interviews that I gave yeah. is silence is okay, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before I just wanted to like keep speaking <laughs> and whatever comes into my mouth and so 
that is not good if you take a pause yeah. when you right yeah and that is it's it's totally okay it's just like conversation so if you just want to like talk a lot then that really made me nervous as well and i could not speak mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, during my interview uh, hiring manager she gave me that advice to be like take pause when speaking and so that i have time to think yes what next i want to say right yes so that is the main lesson i have learned and i have been uh, <clears throat> using that in my normal conversation as well so yeah it has really improved my uh, communication skills and also my confidence level yes oh <laughs> i'm going to write this down because most most people when they feel nervous mm -hmm. they even faster yes yes i think they just <laughs> want to finish <laughs> this and they go home <laughs> which is not good yeah right and if you pause mm -hmm. you give yourself time to think yeah you speak. can you also give your interviewer time to absorb to absorb what you said mm -hmm. And you also look natural. When I look at you, Ajit, you you look very sincere, right? Mm -hmm. I can tell that you when you speak, you look people in the eyes, and then you you pause. And yeah, that's that actually. If you calm down, and then people will, will naturally slow down as well. That becomes a normal conversation. Yeah. So previously, I used to be very nervous because of that also so yeah <laughs> i try to calm myself down <laughs> during any uh conversation with anyone you know yeah mm -hmm. yeah I i'll write that down yeah <laughs> so other other uh, other students other mentees okay. yeah and Aji, if you were to give one advice to future students what is it could be skill, could be experience, and could be bookend, and could be mentorship. Anything that you can think of. Okay, so the main thing that I would say is uh, you should believe in yourself first. So because if you do not believe in yourself, how <laughs> do you get others to believe in you and hire you, right? Yeah. So you should uh, have the like technical skills. Most of the people will learn it. But believing in yourself and becoming confident about what you are uh, able to do and showing off your skills, that is the main uh, skill, I would say, to have, must have skill to um, become successful in anything, not just like job search, but in anything. So believe in yourself and never give up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that you say. And Ajit, I still remember you you actually stood out from your cohort. I remember you because <laughs> um, you. I completed those tests first, like within. Yes, you completed the test first, and you always took initiative. And mm -hmm. if anything, you you would just you know text me, and so yeah. I remember your name naturally. I remember your name um, and mentorship, um, and everything and when you find a job you also uh told me i yeah. think this is going to help you long term mm -hmm. as you said i'm also a introverted person i'm very very quiet normally me too. And, but um, it, it it doesn't have to be like weakness right so yeah. i still remember one time i talked to uh, a super sales so he said he he's he's like the national um, champion in his company, but he is very very quiet. Okay. He said his client said uh, when people talk to him, they naturally lower the guard, and they 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 trust him. <laughs> they trust him, and when mm -hmm. they talk to him, they feel like they're taking long, relaxing bath, and it it's a very natural and good conversation. Um, so he's a good sales, <laughs> and he's shy. 
<laughs> so I really, really like that. Mm -hmm. um, and also people say job searching is even harder than the bookend because bookend, the learning path is defined. You're going to learn these tools. You're going to do these projects. If you put in the time, like you said, never give up, stay mm -hmm. the course, and you will finish it, right? But job search, it's everywhere and it's different opportunity. And it's it's not possible to have all the answers before you even start looking. And when you get the call and it's short notice, you only have a day or maybe two days to prepare. <laughs> so, and everything from resume to interview, um, they make you feel awkward and very, very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. How did you force yourself to do these uncomfortable things? So, yeah, the first thing, as I said, it was the mentor who helped me. So with his help, I thought like I am mm, getting better every day, you know? Mm. So that is it's very it, important feedback. Yeah. Yeah. So because you don't hear back from the employer. Yeah. yeah so not hear back from the employers, but what made me go keep going on is that I was becoming more like better than I was yesterday. Yes. Right. So yeah, that is the main thing. And also I would say <clears throat> Uh, so there were times when I wanted to give up, you know, I was very stressed. So, uh, as I said, I uh, applied for jobs, like a full-time job search for like four months. So yeah. in between, I was very stressed and I even <laughs> thought sometime like, <laughs> I cannot do it, you know, yeah. there were some days I felt like that. But uh, at that time, what I thought is, if I am going to give up, then why did I even start it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Without, without getting to my destination, I was not going to give up. And also my wife, so she kept, uh, she believed in me and mm -hmm. always gave me the strength to... Um, mm -hmm against my uh, stress and negative thoughts. And finally, I did it. <laughs> wow, so, it's never easy. So it's not something, you know, you can, you can, you can, you can take it along. So you have a mentor, you have their supportive wife. Yeah. I always like the husband and wife thing, you know, one, mm -hmm. one maybe has a stable job and then the other one, becomes yeah. unstable and unstable and you can go crazy uh, yeah but, because yeah. i did not have any work mm -hmm. so that was also very stressful and uh all, the whole day i used to stay at home i did not have any <laughs> and so i kept myself busy by uh, learning these data analytics skills and i did many like virtual internships as well during that time so but still you will definitely be at that point when you do not get any interviews as i said i applied for like over 300 jobs and only got interviews for 10 to 15. so mm -hmm. it is cool yeah job search will definitely be very stressful but you should not give up that is what i will say mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you give up then you are saying you don't want it right mm -hmm. that's true on it, you'll never give up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And again, last call, um, Mr. or maybe Miss New, do you have any questions for the Hello? S L New. <laughs> I'm not picking on you. Uh, it's okay if you don't have questions. But uh, Aji, I, I, I really, really want to thank you for you know taking the time. Um, I think it's always um, a good thing to see you come back and you know uh, give give, <laughs> give back. And in future, I I want to say this, and it's from the bottom of my heart. And mm -hmm. 
this is not the end of the relationship. It's mm -hmm. only the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you come back and share your experience with um, more students, it's going to inspire them even more. Yeah. In future, once you settle, once you settle in your new job, and uh, if you feel you have extra capacity, and um, please let me know. And I'd like to invite you back to give you a guest lecture and um, become a mentor and help the new generation of students. Yeah, I would definitely love to do that. And yeah, so <clears throat> as Bach helped me to get my land my first job, if I can, like if I could help at least one person do the same thing, then yeah, I would feel very proud, you know. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and that's also the reason why I love this job. It's it's not easy, you know. When I see people struggle, I struggle. <laughs> uh, when I see you get a job, I feel very, very happy. I tell my wife, and <laughs> I, I sleep I sleep well <laughs> that day. <laughs> it, it is true. It is true. Um, so, um, Alia, any last minute question before we call this, um, you know, the end? <laughs> <laughs> 